Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. Uh, today, inshallah, what I want to do is I want to talk about uh, the science of Tawheed and uh, what books the person needs to study, what books the person needs to read, and what books uh, the person needs to memorize. Because this is obviously, this is a question that a lot of the students have in regards to the Matun, uh, the Matun al almiya and uh, what to memorize, and also the books and the explanations of what to read. And uh, inshallah, so what we're going to try to uh, try to accomplish today, inshallah, in this uh, in this uh, video, and trying to keep it as brief as possible, is to sort of set like a sort of boronamage, like a program for the person to follow, uh, starting with the the smallest book and progressing and doing like a tadaruj until the person gets to the the, the more more difficult books, or, you know, in, in this uh, in the science. So obviously, tawhid is a uh, first off. We need to understand the tawhid. Everything in the religion is tawhid. So tawhid is not a specific science per se. Like we study Tawheed as far as like uh, the Hadith and to deal with certain uh, issues of Tawheed and uh, and what what uh, contradicts like what what causes a person's to, you know Tawheed to become uh, non-existent basically. Like for example, a person going to a uh, soothsayers and person going to fortune tellers, person uh, working with sihr and these types of things, and knowing the impermissibility of all of these. Now this, of course, we understand this is the science of Tawheed that we study. But everything, every every single thing in the religion is Tawheed. In the Quran and Sunnah, everything in the Quran is Tawheed, because all of this is calling to you know to 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 the oneness of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and that we we take the the shara from only one. You know, one, one, the one that has the right to be worshipped, and that's it, and, 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 and him and him alone. So, so Tawheed is much bigger than obviously just a science that we study, because everything, when you study Bulugh Maram, you study Usul al Fiqh, you study uh, any book of Hadith, Bukhari, Muslim, or anything, Tafsir bi Kathir, you are studying Tawheed. So, but being like what, what we're going to talk about now is, of course, the actual science and the, the matun, the little books that have been put together for the memorization and for the studying of student, uh, for the students to study. So, uh, the first book, obviously, that everybody should start off with, and this is the memorization, the studying, and the reading of uh, explanations, is Al Asul al Thalatha. This is this should be the beginning point for every student of knowledge, and it generally is in now in our time. Obviously, the people in the past they more focus on just memorizing hadith. And they would memorize the different Abu Abu Hadith. And you know, every you see like uh, Bukhari has Kitab al Tawheed, uh, and uh, Sahih Muslim, you have Kitab al Iman. And obviously, if a person wants to take that route, that is, that is, that's the proper, that's the route of the Salaf. But like what we have now, because we have the ulama that came, uh, came in our, you know, in, the, in our recent times, in the last 200, 300 years, and they made things a lot easier. So they've compiled these uh, different Rasail and these Matun. And they made them easier for the people to memorize, so they can focus on these issues that, that need to be focused on. And Asul al Talatha, of course, is uh, is one of those books. Asul al Talatha is dealing with the three uh, questions that a person is going to be asked in the grave, which is man uh, rabbuk, ma'adinuk, wa man wa man So these three these three questions that a person will be asked in the grave, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Yuthabitu Allahu ladina amanu bil qawl thabati fil hayat dunya wa fil akhirah." So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will give uh, the person firmness in this life with a firm statement. And which is the that he acts on it. He's not just saying it, but he's saying it and he's acting upon it in this life. That Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will give him that same firm firmness in, in that in that statement in the next life, which is in a, when he gets asked those three questions in the grave. So this is a very 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 important book to start with, and every every student in the beginning should memorize this book. The book is is just full of adilla, and it's dealing with all the, the basics of ibadah, especially when he goes over, you know, the ma'rifat uh, al-din al-Islam bil adilla. So when we deal with like, you know, Madinuk, and then he goes over all the different parts of Islam with the Adilla. So it's a beautiful book. And all of the, you know, you see like uh, the way that he put it together is very easy. It's very easy to understand. Even for a person who's at the time doesn't even know, uh, doesn't understand Arabic. Like they're in the process of learning the Arabic language. Uh, this book is very beneficial for that person to memorize while he's in that process of learning. You know, because it's, it's, it's that easy. So... Uh, it's, it's what most of the children you saw, like uh, when we were in the match, the, everybody started off with this book in the beginning. So this book should be memorized, and this book should be studied. And it should, and uh, as far as the explanations, I mean, uh, a lot of different explanations from different ulama. Uh, the person should try to read them all. I take one explanation in the beginning and try to make that your focal point. Something like the explanation, the sharh of uh, by Sheikh Uthaymin, rahimahullah. Take that sharh, take that explanation, and make that explanation your focal point. 
to like extract the benefits and all that. And then after you've done that, and once you've gotten a good understanding of the book with, with, the, with the class that you're taking, then just start reading different uh, shuruh. You have the you have an explanation by Sheikh Saleh Fouzan. You have an explanation by Sheikh Muhammad Aman Al Jami. You have an explanation uh, by Zay, Sheikh Zayd Al Madkhali. Uh, so also Rahimahum Allah. You know Sheikh uh, Muhammad Aman Al Jami and uh, Sheikh Zayd Rahimahum Allah and, and many more. You have different uh, different explanations. You have an explanation by Sheikh Mabaz Rahimahum Allah. Uh, which is very, 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 very basic and very simple. So it's very good for a person who's in the stages of learning Arabic. And I was probably, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the first book that I read in the Arabic language was the uh, was the explanation of Sheikh Mubaz and Asul al -Thalath. After I memorized the Metan, that was the first book that I actually sat down and read the whole book from cover to cover. So it's, it's a small risala. It's not too big. But uh, if a person wants to take, like if a person has a good understanding of Arabic language, uh, the, the explanation of Sheikh Hudaymin is much better to, to extract the benefits and to, you know, to use that as your focal point, to use that as your basis of uh, writing all the definitions of all the different forms of ibadah and the things that you need to know, all the different fawaid from the book into a notebook and memorizing that and then branching off and then reading all the other explanations. After that, uh, you have uh, obviously Al-Qawad al arba which uh, it should be memorized. Not, I mean, it's not necessary, it's not super, like necessary. The two main books that the person should uh, focus on the memorization of is Asul al Talatha and Kitab al Tawheed, as far as the science of Tawheed. So I just clarify that up front. Those should be the two books that you should focus most on. And if a person said, okay, look, man, I don't, I don't really have that strong of a memory and I can't really do all this and that, or maybe I'm stressed for time, uh, and if a person has the ability to memorize Kitab al Tawheed, he should do that alone. You know, if you're only going to take one book and you say, I'm only going to do one book, then take uh, Kitab al-Tawheed. Otherwise, at least take al Sulu Talatha and Kitab al-Tawheed because they, they complement each other. They complement each other. So there are things in Kitab al-Tawheed that you're not going to find in al Talatha and vice versa. Uh, with Qawad al Arba, it's very beneficial. If a person can memorize it, it's, uh, it's uh, definitely uh, it's, it's an easy book. You know, it's only like, uh, I think it takes less than four minutes to read the whole metan. It's, it's a small metan. It's only four principles. Uh, it can be memorized uh, in a week in a week's time or even less. Some people memorize the whole the whole thing in a day. But obviously when I talk about memorization, if you follow my previous videos, when I talk about memorization, you understand what I mean when I say a week. That means that you're taking each page and you're reading, reading it at least 300 times. So uh, if you're just trying to memorize it quickly, yeah, yeah, I mean, I've seen people that memorize it in a day. So it's because it's, it's, it's very, very, very small. Uh, after Kuwad al Arba, you also should study Nawaqad al-Islam. Which are the which is uh, al Imam? All of these rasail are from al, al Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, because uh, like I said, he was one of the people that came later on and had the ihtimam with Tawheed. And he went through the books of Sheikh Al Islam and Taymiyyah, the books of Ibn Qayyim, and he extracted all these different principles from their books and put them together in small and these uh, small rasail for us to memorize. And he laid it out for us and made it easy for us. So Alhamdulillah, you know we think you know we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. To, uh, to, uh, to give him genital for the dose for his, for his khidmah for the religion, for his khidmah for tawheed. And because he did, he made it easy for us. So now you have all of this, you know, it's all in one place. Now, all these different rasail dealing with all the different issues in uh, tawheed, it's all there, it's all together, and it's all ready for you. So alhamdulillah, take advantage of it. Definitely take advantage of this. So in this book, Nawaqad al-Islam, he put together the ten, the, the 10 things that take a person out of Islam. If, they, if the person does these 10 things, they will take him out of Islam. They like basically make his uh, Islam null and void. And uh, these ten things they should be studied because they should be avoided at all costs. It's a very very small book. Uh, it's a very small metan. I'm sorry. It's maybe two pages. In, in fact, uh, it's smaller, much smaller than Kawad al Arba. And this a person should not have a problem memorizing in a day or two, easily. You know, it's it's a very very simple, very simple metan. Uh, he does not put all the adilla with uh, a lot of the issues in the book because he's just listening and listening to the book. So as you go along and you study the book, you should go and memorize the adilla. And the, the benefit of memorizing these like smaller matun, even though, like I said, the most important book that you should memorize is obviously Kitab al -Tawheed. But the benefit of mem memorizing these smaller matun, obviously, as a student of knowledge, if you're ever like in a different area where you're going and giving dawah or you're, maybe you're visiting different masajid, it's, it's an easy book that you have memorized that you can just, okay, you could 
say, all right, I'm going to be in this city for like uh, two days, three days, maybe visiting my family or something like that. So I can sit here and I can open up a class in Kawad al Arba. I can open up a class in Nawakul al Islam and finish it. You know, whereas like something like Kitab Tawheed, which would take, you know, months to finish uh, if you if you taught it like every day and you went through like, you know, because it's, I mean, at the very least, if you took a chapter a day, it would take about a little over two months to finish. So, I mean, that, that alone, it takes time. But the, these smaller matun, you can you, you, you have them memorized. And as you're going around, traveling around, giving dawah or just visiting your family, when you're ever in that position where you just want to like teach some, you know, you could open up a class for the brothers in the masjid for their benefit. It's, it's something easy, you know, to have like a Al-Qa'ad al arba to have a Nawakul al-Islam. So these books, they should definitely, I, I, I advise the students, students of knowledge to memorize them, as we all did, alhamdulillah. But uh, it's not, it's not uh, I wouldn't say that it's necessary. Like, you have to do it. The main focus that you want to focus on is the next book. The next book is Kitab al-Tawheed. Uh, the same thing with uh, Al-Qa'ad al arba and uh, Nawakul al-Islam. You have different shuruh from different ulama from our time. There are little, most of them very, very small uh, little shuruh that you can take and you can probably read within an hour. So the, alhamdulillah, get, get as many as you can and just read. Just keep reading. I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with reading as much as you can. And try to read as much as you can. So, I mean, for me, when I was memorizing these books and studying these books, I didn't, it didn't really matter to me. As long as uh, the, the sheikh was from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, khalas, I take the, take the explanation and I read it. You know, because you always get something from it. You know, even if it's simple, alhamdulillah, it's a reminder. If you, you know, if it's not something simple, it's an exercise for your mind. And he'll bring you, bring more for why, and then he might open up your mind to things that you didn't think about before. So just read. Get as many as you can, especially those, those, uh, those smaller books. They're, they're easy, because like I said, you can read them within an hour, the explanations. All right, so the next book and the main book that you want to focus on is Kitab al-Tawheed. Now, obviously, Kitab al-Tawheed is a, it's a much bigger book. Uh, it depends on the print that you get. Uh, you have the Dada bin Hazm print. is a lot longer than all the basic prints. And you have other prints that have the Masa'il. So some people, they tell you you should memorize it with the Masa'il. Some people say you don't need to memorize it with the Masa'il, but be very familiar with the Masa'il. Uh, some people will prefer to memorize it from the Dada ibn Hazm print because the Dada ibn Hazm print brings the whole ayat, which that's my preference. Uh, all the all the matun all, all the copies of Kitab al-Tawheed that I have are from the Dara ibn Hazm one. It's a lot longer, but he brings uh, you know because of this print brings the whole ayat of all, all the ayats. Whereas the other prints they don't do that. You know they'll be like you know Kul Taala wa Taluma Harma Rabbukum Alaykum Ala Tushriku Bishayn Al Ayat. You know he won't bring it won't bring the whole ayat. Whereas the Dara ibn Hazm print will bring the whole ayat. So this is something that you. Uh, it's up to you. It's up to the person. The majority of the people, the students of knowledge, they memorize from the other prints, the ones that don't bring the whole ayat. But that's just my preference. So you, each person to each his own. You know, each person chooses what he wants. So for me, I, I want the whole, the whole thing. Because whenever a person writes al ayah, he means what it means is like, for example, if he says, you know, call Allah, call Allah Taala, call Taala, rabbukum alaykum an la tushriku bi shayn al ayah. What he means by al ayah, he means he means ila akhir al ayah. So the daughter bin Hazm, he you know they bring it to the akhir al ayah. So alhamdulillah, so it's uh, for me that's that's better, and I prefer that more than uh, than the ones without. You know, this is al ayah, al ayah, al ayah. When in fact, when I was memorizing Kitab Tawheed in Saudi Arabia with a as a brother, he's a graduate from uh, Al Imam Muhammad ibn Saud. University, he's from the Kuliyat to Sharia, and we were memorizing it together because we we're trying to go sit down and get an ijazah from the shiuch that you know that had memorized it from somebody who memorized it from somebody who memorized it from Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. So we were trying to get that type of uh, sanad. So he was memorizing from the other version, and I was memorizing from the daughter of the Hazm version. So there's a big difference when we were rising with each other. And of course, like I said, some some people. They even memorize it with the Masa'il. That's your choice. All that is just personal choices. Uh, be very familiar with the Masa'il, but uh, to say that it's necessary that a person memorize it, if the person understands why he's bringing the, uh, the ayat and the ahadith throughout the different chapters, you'll, you'll be able to extract those Masa'il, inshallah, for yourself. But it's, it's good in the beginning to keep going back to those Masa'il to see it, to see like, okay, where is this, where is this, where is this from this adillah? And alhamdulillah, it's good. But I wouldn't say that it's necessary to memorize it. You know, that's a, again, that's a personal choice. 
So a person focuses on trying to memorize this. Now, of course, Kitab Tohi is going to take a little bit longer to memorize. It's not going to be one of those easy books, especially if you're doing a daughter bin Hazm. You you can go ahead and put a, at least a good half of the year away if you really, really want to get it memorized properly. A little bit longer if you really want to, really, really, really want to have it down. Uh, but that's that's assuming that that's all you're going to be memorizing. I mean, obviously, as a student of knowledge, you're still going to be trying to focus on Quran. You're still going to be focusing on, uh, you still have to memorize hadith from time to time. So, uh, yeah, so it, it, it depends on the person. The person's already finished the Quran, and now he's just memorizing only Kitab Tawheed while he's revising the Quran, then khalas, he shouldn't have any trouble memorizing that uh, quicker than a person who's obviously doing other things with it. Uh, once the person gets done, like uh, throughout the memorization, the process of memorization, now, with explanations of Kitab al-Tawheed, now, they're a lot more plentiful. A lot more plentiful. I mean, uh, you, you got all the, you know, from all the different ulama from nowadays, which I would, I would advise to start with that first. Start with, like, for example, you have the uh, Qawla Mufid, the, the Sharh of Kitab al-Tawheed, the Sheikh uh, You have uh, the Sharh of Sheikh Saleh Fawzan. Uh, another Sharh from uh, Sheikh Saleh al Sheikh. You have a sharh by Sheikh Najmi, rahimahullah. Uh, you have uh, even recently one of the students of Damaj, Sheikh Abdul Hamid Al Hajuri Al Zakari, he came out with a sharh that I, I had. Alhamdulillah, I read it before I left Saudi Arabia. It's a huge, it's a huge sharh, and uh, he basically he brought everything, everything that you need to know. Was the ad, you know? So it's uh, it's one of those like end all, like everything that you need is is in that sharh. Uh, I can't remember the name though, honestly. But uh, if you look it up, it's by Sheikh Abdul Hamid Al Hajuri Al Zakari Al Hajuri. So uh, it's about eight hundred pages. So it's, it's very 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 big explanation. But I left it in Saudi Arabia. Once I read it, I gave it to a brother and said, "Here you go," you know. So Allah Mustaan, like today, I, I, I really really. Really regret that decision. Allah <laughs> Musta'an. You know, the brother was helping me out, so I just did it as a favor to him. But I really, really wish I gave him a different book, Allah Musta'an, because that's a very beneficial book. Like I said, it's, it's very long, but it's it's just jam packed to full it. You know, so everything that you, you know, I mean, the way that Sheikh Abdul Hamid dealt with the book, he dealt with it from like every single, every angle, every single, and he brought so much for it. So Alhamdulillah, uh, you know, for, for a student of knowledge, it's a good book uh, for somebody that's uh, getting started in, in studying. Uh, I wouldn't advise that book because it's, it might become too long for the person, and it, it might yeah it might cause the person just to become frustrated and burn out, and that, that's not good. But for a student of knowledge, like Sheikh Abdul Hamid's explanation is definitely it's very very beneficial. But it's hard to get. You know, it's very very. Alhamdulillah, I did find it in the bookstores in Saudi Arabia. But I haven't seen it online. I've tried to find it since I've been back in America, and I haven't found it. Trust me, inshallah, inshallah, as soon as I find it, I'm ordering it. So it's just, it's one of those books, mashallah. Uh, so after that, I mean, like, just take and just 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 read the explanations of Kitab al uh, from the from the Ma'asurin, from the contemporary scholars right now, because they're easier. Uh, then you start to go back further. Uh, you have the you have the Hashia of a Kitab al Tawheed, which is Qurat al Uyun al Muwahideen. All right, uh, this is from uh, one of the grandsons of uh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. He's also Sahib al Fath al Majid. He, he wrote two books. He wrote Fath al Majid and he wrote Qurat al Uyun al Muwahideen. Which Fath al Majid is actually is a completion of Taysir al Aziz al Hamid. Because Taysir al Aziz al Hamid was, uh, was written by another of the grandsons of uh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn, Abd, uh, ibn Abdul Wahhab. That he got killed by the Turks before he was able to complete the book. He wasn't, uh, so he didn't finish it. So his cousin came along, he took the book, he completed it, he kind of cleaned it up and like, you know, put added some benefits here that, that were left out and kind of like did away with some of the, you know, repetitive uh, fawaid. And he, then he made this book and he brought it out as Fath al-Majid. So Fath al-Majid is a very, very, very beneficial book. And also Taysir al-Aziz al-Hamid is also very beneficial. So these are books that you should have in your library at all. You know, you have to have them at all costs. You know, you have to have these books with you. Taysir al-Aziz al-Hamid and Fath al-Majid. Fath al-Majid, uh, 
uh, also is, is definitely good to get a good a, a good tahqiq, you know, from uh, Fath al-Majid. One of the better tahqiqs was from a former student of Damaj, Muhammad ibn Hizam. He did it, and this is, uh, this is available in bookstores in Saudi Arabia. I don't know about on the international market as far as the internet is concerned. I haven't seen them. But if the person knows somebody in Saudi Arabia or maybe even in Egypt, I'm pretty sure it probably, it's probably available. He did a tahqiq of this, and it's very, very beneficial. It's a, mashallah, it's a very thorough tahqiq of the book because he was teaching that book in Damaj. And while he was teaching it, he, he made that tahqiq. So it's, alhamdulillah, it's a very beneficial. And it's a must-have to have, like, as a companion as you're studying and you're looking, you know, because, alhamdulillah, he laid out all the work for you. Everything's done. So you just have to read, read his notes, and alhamdulillah, it's, it's very beneficial. So you have that. And Qurat uh, al-Uyun al-Mawahideen is obviously it's a lot easier than Fath al-Majid because it's, it's a hashiyah in Kitab Tawheed. It's much smaller. It's much more basic. But it's still, uh, alhamdulillah, it's still a very, very, very beneficial book. Uh, this is the book I'm reading right now. I'm, I'm right at the end of the book. So I'm uh, more of commenting right now on, 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 on knowledge that I'm gaining from the book as I'm reading it. So from what I've seen so far, alhamdulillah, it's a very basic very basic book, but there are certain concepts in the book where the person does have to have prior knowledge of certain uh, usul that, that that are taught in the uh, books of Sheikh Al Islam. Like you see, like if a person studies Al Wasatiyah, studies Al Tahawiyah, uh, there are certain things that he mentions in the book that would would need somebody to. If you don't understand them, you'd have to have them explain to you. Uh, but those are very very few. Uh, the majority of the book, I would say, the vast majority, ninety five percent of the book is a, a very basic it's very it's a very basic book that can be understood by all the students of knowledge alhamdulillah at all levels as long as a person has an understanding of the arabic language can understand this book with no problem inshallah uh i said and after that just keep reading 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 uh if the person after after he's after you memorize kitab tawhid you study kitab tawhid then uh you want to study I mean, you have a choice with Keshfa Shubahat, honestly. Keshfa Shubahat, uh, to study it before Kitab al-Tawheed or after to- uh, Kitab al-Tawheed, uh, it's kind of up to the person, right? Me, my preference was to study it afterwards because you get all the basics of the Tawheed down. And then because Keshfa Shubahat is dealing with the Shubahat of the people that obviously they're going to the Qubur and they're making a dua, they're doing tawaf and they're doing dhabh, you know, with the Qubur. And it's dealing with the Shubahat that they have and how you can refute and respond to their Shubahat. And, and refute them. So it's a very, very good book. But it, because it's going into that specific, that specific uh, area, I think it's better that the person studies Kitab Tawheed best uh, first. I'm sorry, that's better that he studies Kitab Tawheed first, gets it memorized, and then he'll have a broader understanding when he goes into Kishfa Shubahat. Kishfa Shubahat is not a different. It's not a difficult book. It's a very simple book. It's, I want to say it's very simple. I mean, I wouldn't advise like a beginning student of knowledge just to jump into that because if he misunderstands certain things, certain concepts, and uh, it, it could uh, cause some problems for him. But uh, so it's better to, you know, go through those basic books first. But uh, honestly, it's much more advisable to uh, take Keshfa, Keshfa Shubuhat after Kitab Tawheed. Wallahu alam. Uh, Keshfa Shubuhat is not a book that needs to be memorized. Uh, you have different shuroor. You have the sh- same thing from amongst the contemporary scholars, uh, Sheikh Salih Fouzan, Sheikh Uthaymin, uh, and, uh, and, and many more. I'm pretty sure you can you can find a lot of different ex- explanations from different ulama from our from our time. So Alhamdulillah, it's uh, it's there. It's uh, like I said, the book it kind of it, it almost explains itself really. So if you see the majority of the explanations, even the explanation of Sheikh Uthaymin, it's not really like super in depth because like the book itself, once you all you really need to do is just understand the metan itself and you'll understand what, what's, what's needed. And if you study Kitab Tawheed, you study Rasul Talatha, you study Qawar al you've gone through this whole silsila, this whole, you know, uh, progression, these stages of progression, alhamdulillah, you know, it should be very, very easy at that point to be able to understand the metan. We don't really need a, a, a large explanation. After you finish uh, Keshf al-Shubahat, then you should move on to Fath al-Majid. Now, I told you you should read it, while you're studying uh, Kitab Tawheed, after you've read all the contemporary scholars, you should definitely read uh, uh, Fath al-Majid. It's definitely a book that should be on the top at the top of your reading list. Uh, Fath al-Majid, he compiles all different statements from Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, ibn al-Qayyim, and all the all different statements from the ulama from before, and all the issues that, that are coming up in the book. It's a very, very beneficial book. It's a, it's a gold mine. Uh, Fath al-Majid is a gold mine. 
It's a, it's a gold mine. If a person were to just sit down and really just read through that book and really get and extract all the benefit from that book, I mean, it's, it's just an endless gold mine. There's so much in it. So, alhamdulillah, for a person to sit down, read it, study it, and read it again, uh, it, it, trust me, I mean, it's, it's, you can't tire from that book. It's one of those books that's just like for all ages, you know, inshallah, until the day of, until the day of judgment. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave, gave the... Gave the mu'allif, you know, he gave him tawfiq. Well, I gave him, gave him very, very, very much tawfiq just to, to put that book together the way that he put it together. It's very beneficial. So you study Fath al-Majid. Uh, the studying of Fath al-Majid, it depends on obviously where you're studying and who you're studying with. Um, in the Maj, it used to take anywhere from like uh, six months to ten months, depending on the teacher, if the teacher was traveling, and how much the teacher was teaching every day. On average, like I'll say, about like six to seven months, uh, maybe less, actually. Uh, a lot. Of, some people will finish it like three and a half months, four months. It, it, like I said, it depends on what the teacher's trying to do with the book. If you have a if you have a teacher that's traveling a lot, then yeah, it's going to be a lot longer. If you have uh, as long as you're having classes every single day. If you're like in Saudi Arabia, and you're having like one class a week, it might take 15 years to finish it. You know, so it, it just, it did, I won't say 15 years, but it probably take a couple years to finish it. So uh, it, it, it depends, honestly. I, uh, like I said, if you're in Yemen, you'll finish it a lot faster. Three months, four months, five months, six months tops. And then more, more than six months, like I said, if you have a teacher who's really doing maybe too much with the book, or maybe he's a very busy guy and he can only teach 10, 15 minutes a day. So he's going to teach the whole year. Maybe take, the, but I mean, that those are, Special circumstances. So, but if you're just taking one class a week, like a lot of the classes you see in Saudi Arabia, it's going to take a long time to finish. But you can go online. Alhamdulillah, you have a lot of the durus online, especially from the students of the Maj, uh, quite a few times. Uh, you, you got some of them, they taught, it, they taught it quite a few times, so they have different explanations of it. Uh, I, I'm not sure if uh, Sheikh Saleh Fozan, he finished it. I know he was teaching it, but I'm not sure if he finished it or not. So... If he did finish it, then alhamdulillah, then that should be available online. So, uh, you know, alhamdulillah, you can benefit. But Fath al-Majid is definitely a book that you need to have uh, a lot of focus on. And uh, and that, that pretty much, I mean, once you get the Fath al-Majid, as far as the science of Tawheed is concerned, like Tawheed as a science itself, as far as these books and this, you're done. I mean, you're not done, done, because obviously you're never done, because Tawheed is something that now... You, you have to practice it, and you have to keep re reviewing it and practicing it and giving da'wah to it your whole life. Just like uh, you're going to learn that as you study Asul al Thalatha, and you learn Asul al Thalatha, where, where uh, Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, he started the book off, you know, I'lam rahimakullah, anu yajibu alayna ta'alamu arba'a masa'al. Al-ula, al-ilmu, huwa ma'rifatullah, wa ma'rifat al-nabi'i, wa ma'rifat al-deen al-islam bil-adillah. So the first thing he said, you know, that it's, it's obligatory upon all of us as Muslims, to learn four, four, four issues. And the first issue he mentioned is knowledge, to get knowledge. And he said, So he said, uh, it's knowing Allah, it's, it's knowing the, the Prophet وسلم, and it's knowing the religion of Islam with evidence. It's not just knowing, okay, we got to pray five times a day, but what's the evidence for that? All right, we're, we're raising our hands in salah. We're doing that. We're, we're pointing our finger at the shahud. What's the evidence for that? Uh, we're, we're fasting Ramadan. What's the evidence for that? Uh, these certain things, they break your fast. What's the evidence for that? So we're learning our religion with evidence. And he said, وَثَانِيَ الْعَمَلُ uh, uh, So after you've learned this knowledge, then it's obligatory upon you to act upon this knowledge, to put this knowledge into practice. وَثَالِثَ الْدَعْوَةُ إِلَيْهِ And now once you've learned this knowledge, you put this knowledge, knowledge into practice. Now it's your duty to call the people to this knowledge. So then he mentioned the last one. He said, and the last part is to have patience on all the harm that, that you that, that you're afflicted with while you're trying to do these three things. I mean, because obviously throughout your studying of the religion, you're going to make a lot of enemies. You're going to have to go through a lot of trials and tribulations. Through your practicing of the religion, you're going to find a lot of difficulties. You're going to go through a lot of trials and tribulations. And then when you start calling the people to this, to the Quran and the Sunnah, to the Tawheed, to the correct understanding, to Tawheed, you're going to have a lot of enemies, a lot of people coming together to conspire against you, to cause problems for you, to, to insult you, to, to all different types of trials a person is going to have to go through. So the person is going to have to have patience and to continue to all of this 
continue to just keep teaching the people and taking that knowledge to the people. Because there's no point in just seeking knowledge just for the just for the love of knowledge itself, just for the sake of seeking knowledge. We seek knowledge so we can we have something that we can act upon and we have evidence that we can act upon. And that's why I mentioned the books that I mentioned, because all of these books are full of evidence. So everything is what I'm giving you is I'm giving you the way that the people studied where I studied it, which was Alhamdulillah, this was what I was blessed to learn when I was studying in Damaj. So, and this is the way that the brothers studied, the majority of the people. Not saying everybody studied like this, but the majority of people. And the reason why these books were chosen, the books that were always chosen in Damaj were always chosen because of evidence. You know, this is what the brothers always focus on, was focusing on uh, like memorizing the deen with Adillah. And that's, that's that's the first thing that we learn in, in, in the Surah Talatha. This is the first thing. So you see, Kitab Tawheed. What is it? It's, it's basically, it's a book of ayat and a hadith and some, you know, speech of like uh, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and some speech of Ibn al -Qayn. Very, very little interspersed throughout the book. But it's mainly just Quran and Sunnah. Uh, Surah Talatha is Quran and Sunnah. Quran al-Arba. He, he brings a principle. He brings the Adillah. It's Quran and Sunnah. You know, and even with a... <clears throat> Excuse me. Even with the uh, Nawakad al-Islam, where he didn't bring the Adilla, but the Adilla is there. You know, you can go and you know, Alhamdulillah, the teacher that you have will will give you the Adilla for each of those principles. So all of this, everything that we try to learn, we try to learn it because of that, because it's with Adilla. And there are other books. I mean, there are a lot of other books. Al Hakami, uh, he he wrote a very beautiful nothum, uh, you know, in an Aqidah, which he he explained it himself, and he wrote it in a very huge book. It's about 700, 800 pages, which is a book that I advise everybody to read, which is Ma'arij al Qubul. It's a very very good book, and because once a person gets to that stage of, uh, like, once you've gotten past, like, you got to like Fath al Majid, uh, you should start reading books that 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 give you the understanding of, you know, that that, that bring all these masail, that bring these issues with the statements from the Salaf with Asanid, uh, Lala Kahi's book. <clears throat> uh, you got uh, 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 La Ajuri's book of Sharia. You got, uh, what was it, Ibn Battah, I believe, in Laybana. You got all these different books that you should be reading. Ma'araj al Qubul al Hakami is a very beneficial book. Madaraj al Salakin, uh, Ibn al Qayyim, also very, 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 very beneficial book. And just start reading, start reading, start reading, and start like really like taking the understanding that you have, that you've gathered. Because the whole point of like what. Uh, what I mean, the whole point of like Fatal Majid is to get you to understand these issues now because he's bringing stuff from like books of Sheikh Al Islam ibn Taymiyyah and the books of uh, uh, Ibn al Qayyim, Rahimahumullah. So now, once you start to get that understanding, now you want to kind of start to read in those books. Now, obviously, you're not going to be able to read a lot even at this point uh, in the books of Sheikh Al Islam ibn Taymiyyah because uh, once you study Aqidah, you go through like a Tahuya, Tadmuriya, and you start to really, really, really get and grasp these concepts of Asma'i wa Sifat. Uh, then that's when, inshallah, that's when you're going to just like, you know, but you also have to have a background of a solar fiqh. But I mean, at that point, inshallah, you can start to kind of like I say, dibble dabble. Madaraj uh, Salakin is a book that you can read, and it's a book that you should read. And, uh, you know, like that. And, and Ajuri's book of Sharia is very, very beneficial. The person should sit down and read that book. And I'm going to give this advice now when I'm discussing the books of Tawheed. And I'm going to give the same advice, inshallah, again. When I talk about the books of Aqidah, inshallah, because uh, Jordi's book is, and I'll probably give it for every book, <laughs> for every size, because uh, Al Ajuri's book on uh, Sharia is just, it's, yes, it's one of those books. And because he's bringing all the Asan, he's bringing all the statements with the Asani. So it's not that you're just seeing the statements of the Salaf. He brings the Ahadith of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa and he brings different statements of the Salaf, but he brings it, brings those statements with the Asani. So it's very, uh, very, 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 very beneficial. As well as, like I said, uh, Lala, uh, Lala Kai's book. It's also very beneficial. So inshallah, that, that that will sum it up. Like I said, the main thing that you want to focus on, you want to focus on the memorization of Allah Surah Talatha, and you want to focus on the, uh, the memorization of Kitab Tawheed. But it's still advisable to memorize Qawad al-Arba and Nawakud al-Islam. As far as Kashf al-Shubuhat, you don't need to memorize it, but you do need to study it and become very familiar with the book and very familiar with the Shubuhat and how to respond to those Shubuhat from the, from the Quran and the Sunnah. And just read, read. You know, study, memorize, and read. Just read as many of those books as you can get your hand on. Get a notebook and just write down all the books that you've read. You know, so when you start to read all the explanations of a Surah Talatha, all the explanations, of, write it in a notebook. So you can go back and see, like, alhamdulillah, what you've accomplished. 
It's, it's very beneficial. And that way, uh, also, you can uh, go back and you can see the, 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 the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on you to, like, to bless you, to memorize this, to read this, to study this, to understand this. And then you need to start teaching that to the people. Walillahi alhamd. Walillahuna subhanaka lama wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilahi la ant. Astaghfiruku wa atubu ilayk.